معكم دكتور صباح عبد الرسول الحمودي اخصائي جراحه الوجه والفكين خاص على شهاده البورد في جراحه الوجه والفكين وتدريسي في كليه طب الاسنان محاضرتي اليوم موجهه الى طلبه المرحله الرابعه في ماده جراحه الفم موضوع المحاضره هو ذا بيزك برنسبلز ان ذا مانجمنت اوف ذا سيست اوف ذا جوب cyst can be defined as a pathological cavity having fluid, semi-fluid or gaseous contents that aren't too created by the accumulations of the pus and frequently but not always is lined by the epithelium. The World Health Organization classified the cyst of the jaw into the following parts. Number one, developmental cyst, which include odontogenic and odontogenic cyst. Odontogenic cyst, like the primordial cyst, which is called the keratocyst, gingival cyst, eruption cyst, lentigerous cyst, follicular cyst, lateral periodontal cyst, and others. Then odontogenic cyst which include the nasopalatine or incisive canal called cyst, globulomaxillary cyst, and nasolabial cyst. Two inflammatory cysts, which is the most common cyst of the jaw. It is involved include the radicular or called periapical cyst and the residual cyst. C false cyst, which is in well, include the cyst which is in which are into lined by the epithelium and include the solitary bone cyst and aneurysmal bone cyst. Pathogenesis of the cyst formations. The following steps occur in during the formation of the cyst. The formation of a cyst takes place in a generally three steps: initiation, then cyst formation then enlargement or expansions of the cyst cavity. The presence of the chronic low-grade infections from the bacteria which is present in the pulp to the initiation or activations of the rest of the malices present in the periapical region, leading to the initiation of the cyst formation. What are the typical features? of the jaw cyst. Jaw cysts usually form sharply defined radiolucency with smooth borders. Fluid may be aspirated from the most of the jaw cyst, which is yellow in color and contain cholesterol crystals. Except the keratocyst which contain the para or orthokeratin. The cyst usually grows slowly, displacing rather than resorption in adjacent to teeth. Cysts are usually asymptomatic, unless infection occurs, and frequently and, and is frequently and are frequently chance radiographical findings. Rarely large enough, forms compressible and flexible when swellings that extending into the soft tissue. They appear bluish when close to the mucosal surface. During examinations and treatment of the cyst of the jaw, the following diagnostic workup should be performed. Number one, taking a comprehensive history of the patient, clinical examination, mainly the age, gender, size, tooth vitality, adults, then imaging techniques. OPG for aspiration from the other cyst. The fluid of the cyst may be bloody, may be yellow, contain cholesterol crystals, may be empty. Biopsy taken to confirm the diagnosis. The most common cyst of the jaw is a radicular cyst, or it's, or it's called periapical cyst. Is the most common cyst of the jaw, composed about 65% of all the cysts of the jaw, arise from the epithelial cells rests of malices. It is occurring due to the response to the chronic low-grade infections of the pulp, 
the most radiographical findings are the small well-defined periapical radiolucency and associated with nine vital truth. Treatment of the radicular cyst to involve the either root canal treatment of the tooth or extraction. This radiograph showing the periapical radiocyst, uh, well-defined radiocyst with smooth borders. Residual cyst, the radicular cyst, the, the radicular cyst that is incompletely removed from the jaw, the remnant of this cyst to proliferate again leading to the residual cyst, treated by using inflation. So the residual cyst occurs in the socket of the tooth which is extracted previously. Dentigerous cyst. The most common developmental odontogenic cyst is the dentigerous cyst. Dentigerous cyst occurs in association with an unerupted tooth, most commonly the mandibular pair molar. Our wisdom here. A dentigerous cyst is usually attached to a tooth at a cemento enamel injection, usually seen between the first to third decade of life with male predilection. What is the preferred treatment of the dentigerous cyst? The dentigerous cyst is usually associated to contain an erupted teeth and displacing an erupted teeth from its position, associated usually with the lower wisdom tooth and attached to a close the crown of an erupted tooth. Radiograph of the dentigerous cyst appear as a well-defined unilocular radiolucency around the crowns crown of an erupted or impacted tooth such as seen in this radiograph and in this radiograph seeing the crown of the an erupted tooth is found in the lumen of the integral cyst treatment of the integral cyst by using inoculations involve the surgical excisions of the entire cyst or my civilizations if the cyst associated to with the vital tooth or in a proper orientation on the jaw we do my civilization of the integral cyst other cyst auto developmental cyst is called autotogenic keratocyst most occur in patients between 10 and 40 years old with a male predilection, usually seen in the mandibular posterior area and the premolar molar region. Characterized by the high recurrence rate after inoculations because the presence of the total cyst in this wall. The lumen of the cyst contains uh, tissue material called the keratin, ortho or parathetal keratin. They tend to grow in anterior posterior direction without cause of vast bony expansions. Appear radiographically as a well defined radiolucency, mostly multilocular, with a scalloped margins. Diagnosed by the combination of the clinical, radiographical, and histopathological findings. Treatment of the odontogenic keratocyst. The preferred treatment of the odontogenic keratocyst is uh, using uh, inoculations of the entire cyst, then application of the carnal solutions to destroy any remaining daughter cyst in the wall of the cyst. Odontogenic keratocyst may, may be associated with the unerupted tooth as seen in this figure. Developmental dent autotogenic cyst. The most common developmental dent autotogenic cyst is the nasopalatine duct cyst. Nasopalatine duct cyst, which is appear as a pear shaped radiosensi in the midline of the maxilla between the central incisors, and it results from the remnant of the nasopalatine duct.
Nasal palatine dexis is usually asymptomatic. This radiograph is showing you the pear shape, the radiolucency between the roots of the upper central incisor and the midline. Other developmental cyst is the globulomaxillary cyst. The globulomaxillary cyst, which is found to appear as an inverted pear shape radiolucency between the roots of the canine, upper canine, and the lateral incisor, is placed into the roots of this tree. Globulomaxillary cyst is treated by the inoculation. Globulomaxillary cyst is truly is a, just a radicular cyst. Nasolabial cyst. It is a developmental system arising in the soft tissue in the sublabial region, causing elevation in this area, sublabial region, would sometimes cause obstruction of the nose. It is large enough. Nasolabial cyst is treated to by the inoculation. Solitary bone cyst. It is a false cyst or called cyst because it can't contain epithelium. Nying. Solitary bone cyst. It is just to uh, uh, produce a dome shape radiolucency with a scallop margins between the root of the involved teeth. It is treated by the exploration and uh, the inoculation. Diagnosis of the cyst of the jaw based on the type of the aspiration. And, uh, during the aspirations of the cyst of the jaw, if the aspirated fluid or gas is clear, pale straw color fluid with cholesterol crystal, mostly dangerous cysts or radicular cysts or others. If the aspirate is a creamy white, thick aspirate, mostly autoglutinic keratocyst. If it is yellow, full smelling, smelling of full smelling fluid or a pus, it is infected cyst. The aspirate is a blood, and the fat is either an erythmal bone cyst or a vascular lesion. Is nothing. Is it nothing? Is nothing get from the aspiration air on aspiration? It is uh, either maxillary entram or traumatic or solitary bone cyst. Negative aspiration indicates solid tumors. The basic principles treatment of the cyst of the jaw. The operative procedure may include number one, marsupialization, inoculations, inoculations after marsupialization, inoculation with curettage, and resection. Marsupializations are called part one operation, cystotomy. In this procedure, a window or a fenestration is made in the bone and the cystic contents are evacuated. The cyst lining is left behind. Once the cyst contents are evacuated, the intracystic pressure reduces. The hollow cavity is then packed till it gets obliterated by bone slowly over a period of time. The cystic lining then becomes continuous with the normal oral mucosa. This figure showing the steps of the marsupialization procedures. A window is made performed in the wall of the cyst and removed, leaving the remaining lining of the cyst in the bone. Then the border of the cyst lining is suited with the oral mucosa. The cavity is packed with the hydroform gauze. Top formation. What are the indications of multiplication? One, extremely large cyst to reduce the chance of pathological fracture, such as the large integral cyst to associated with the lower wisdom tooth. 
inoculations of this system may lead to the pathological medieval fracture. Two, proximity to vital structures, such as the inferior alveolar nerve and trunk, like the cells or root of the tooth. Three, access to all portions of the cyst is difficult. The fourth indication of much civilization is the assistance in the tooth eruption. The fifth indication is the extent of the surgery is large we prefer the mass civilization. Advantage of the mass civilization is simple procedure and we spare vital structures from damage. What are the advantages of the mass civilization? Number one, entire pathological tissue is left behind. Two, high chance of recurrence of assist. Three, as the bony cavity is large, healing and filling up with normal bone takes a long time. Four, use of cyst plug is required with a repeated cleansing. Fifth, disadvantage is the time it is a procedure it is time consuming and repeated appointments and visits for the patient. The second operative procedure which is used for treatment of the choices is the inoculation. It is called part 2, cystectomy. Inoculation is a surgical removal of the entire cystic lining in two to the entire system. It means shelling out of the entire cystic lining without rupture. This surgical procedure leaves behind a hollow cavity in the bone, covered by the oral mucoperiosteum. This gets filled up with the blood clot, which eventually organizes to form healthy bone. Inoculations may be associated with one of the following. May be associated with the primary closure of the oral mucosa after removal of the cyst. Inoculations open parking. The opening that is uh, remain after inoculation cyst is needed to, to heal by secondary intention by granulation tissue. But those impregnated with bismuth, either form paraffin paste or white heat varnish is used in this procedure. Inoculation may be associated with bone graft. Bone grafting with autogenous cancellous bone graft can be done in cases of large bony defects. The bone graft obliterates the cavity and stimulates osteogenesis. There is, however, a risk of wound breakdowns and infection of the bone grafts, of bone grafts which may lead to failure. This figure showing the apical cystic inoculation performed at time of tooth removal. The tooth is extracted and the, the tooth socket is curated. Apical cystic must be performed with care because of the proximity to the apices of the adjacent teeth and mesial sinus and periodic nerve. This figure also showing the other steps of the regulation procedures. Indications for inoculations. Inoculation is the treatment of choice for removal of cysts of the jaw and should be employed with any cyst of the jaw that can be safely removed without unduly sacrificing the underlying structures that as the interim inferior area or root of the teeth. What are the advantages of the inoculation? Entire pathological tissue is removed from the lesion to tissue available for histopathological examination. Three chances of recurrence are less. For healing time is faster and less appointment and visiting for the patient. Five inoculations with the primary closures eliminates the need for repeated appointments for parking and medicated goals, irrigation and fabrications of the plug, etc.
disadvantages of uh, inoculation. Number one, relatively radical it is a procedure to chances of utilizing the adjacent teeth. Three, chances of fracture of the jaw. Four, risk of creations of the oral enteral or oral nasal communications. And this is occurred due to the manipulations of the large cyst in the maxilla. Inoculations after my civilization. In some cases of the cyst of the jaw, the combination procedure, inoculation after masturbation may be performed. First, to the masturbation is done, and after the uh, cavity of the bone is reduced in size due to the bone formation, then after three, four weeks, so the primary closure of the uh, area is done. Initial healing is rapid after masturbation. But the size of the cavity may not to decrease appreciably past a certain point. There is still a large cavity after weeks of mycelization. The combination procedure will reduce the complication and morbidity and accelerate the healing of the defect. What are the indications of mycelization and inflammation? Indications is the same of the mass civilization is to prevent the trauma to the adjacent to monitor structures. However, if the cyst cavity not operate totally after mass civilization, two cyst cavity that the patient is finding difficult to dancing. The advantages of the, this procedure, no, manipulation after masturbation, are the same as those listed for masturbations and inoculations. And their disadvantages are the same those for the mass masturbation. Inoculations with cure touch. It means that after inoculation of the entire cyst, we take a pair or curate to remove one to two millimeter of bone around the entire periphery of the cystic cavity. This is done to remove any remaining epithelial cells that to give to the recurrence. Inoculations and curatage may be used to in the treatment of the recurrence cyst and in the treatment of the odontogenic curatus cyst. Indications of the inoculations with curatage. Number one, in case of the odontogenic keratic cyst. Two, in any cyst that recur after what was deemed a thorough, a thorough removal. Advantages of this procedure. It reduces the likelihood of recurrence. While its disadvantage is that the curate is more destructive of adjacent bone and other tissues. Complications of the cyst management. Number one, injury to the inferior alveolar nerve, injury to the adjacent teeth, fracture of the jaw, which is called pathological fracture, oral antral or oral nasal fistula communication. Hematoma formation, infection, formation of the dead space after removal of the cyst, incomplete removal and recurrence, and malignant transformations of the any remaining cyst lining of the cyst. Thank you for your listening.